Hello everybody, today we're going to do a rate law problem. We're going to use something called the method of initial rates. And to do that, I have some data here that's made up, but you can envision some sort of experiment that has reactants A, B, and C, and they are put in a vial under different concentrations and some sort of initial reaction rate is observed. There's a few things I'm going to have us do in this problem. The first is we're going to find the rate law. Part of the rate law is really going to have this constant in it, and so we're going to find the rate constant that describes this reaction. And then you'll see down here I talk about the unknown rate. I've left one of these blanks so that we can actually predict what the initial rate ought to be for this fifth reaction that's over here. So generically I'm going to come up here and I'm going to write that our most general statement for the rate law should look something like this. We have the rate is going to be equal to the rate constant, and then I'm going to have the concentration of A raised to some power, and then it's going to be the concentration of B raised to some other power. They're not required to be the same. And then concentration of C raised to yet a third different power. That's a Z up there. And as a reminder, these things up here, these exponents, these things are not required to match the stoichiometry of a reaction. That would only be true if you have a simple one-step reaction. So our goal is to find those three exponents as well as the rate constant. The way that you approach a problem like this with this method of initial rates is that you take advantage of the fact that in math we can divide both sides of the equation by the same value and our equation remains the same. So let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to have rate for one of these things. So I'll call this rate 1 is going to be equal to the constant. And then I'm just going to rewrite this stuff that's up here. B, C, Z. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this equation basically by itself, but it's going to be for a different trial. So these are my division symbols, and I'm going to see if I can color code some of this here. So now we're going to have rate 2 is going to be its K, and then I have a separate A, B, C. Notice that the k's are going to cancel. This is going to be useful for me because I don't initially know what the rate constant is. So that's a way for me to get rid of that. Now, even though I'm going to use separate trials over here, so, you know, trial 1 versus trial 2, the exponents, the x, the y, and the z, those things are all going to remain the same. So the x for one trial must be the same as the x for a second trial. Now, I can simplify this. And it's going to look something like this. So this is just me rewriting this equation. We don't have the K. We're going to be taking ratios of reactants from one trial to another. So it might look a little abstract at the moment, but let's see what this is going to do for us. Let me just clear a little bit of this so that I can be a little bit more deliberate in my color coding. So now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to actually make a comparison between trials with different numbers. If you come in and look at the data set, you will notice that there's actually a lot of similarity here. So notice that these are the same values. Notice that those are the same values. The only thing that's changing between trials 1 and 2 is the concentration of A. Also, of course, it would have a different rate. These are the things we're trying to take advantage of in a problem like this. So it's best if you have simplicity to this, where if you only have one thing that's changing at a time. So let's plug in numbers and see what that gets us. I'm going to use trial 2 as the numerator and trial 1 as the denominator. The only reason why I'm doing that is because of my preference to have large numbers over small numbers. So I'm going to come in and look at my initial rate here. I'm just plugging into this equation now. 6.27 E minus 2. Then I'll go ahead and put in trial 1. Okay, and here's the rate information that I'm going to put in. 0 0.035. 0.025 raised to the x and then come up and again notice that 
if I do the same thing for the B values over here, and then it's going to be the same for the C values over here, I'm dividing the same number by itself, and so those are going to be one inside of the parentheses. This is done on purpose so that we have basically one raised to the Y, and we have one raised to the Z. Excuse me for running out of room there a little bit. You'll recall from mathematics that one raised to the any power remains one. And so this entire set of numbers over here can be reduced down to just the number one. And again, that's actually the point of this process. So we've gotten rid of the y and the z variable. Now all I have is the inside of this, which is 1.96. That's the ratio of those rates there. That's going to be equal to, and then the ratio of concentration A is 1.4 raised to the X. Now being that I designed this problem, I can tell you that you ought to be able to just guess and check for the X, Y, and Z variables here. Look for something straightforward. Integers often, although it's not required to be an integer, you would notice that if we did guess and check, this turns out to be a situation where x is going to be equal to 2. 1.4 squared is equal to 1.96. So that's the basic process, and we need to do that two more times. Now I'm going to clean up the board a little bit. Okay, you can see I've rewritten my rate law up top with our new information where we have the 2. And now I'm going to go through this next one just a little bit quicker since we've seen what we're doing. This time I'm making a comparison of 3 and one, those two different trials, because you'll notice that the concentration of A is unchanging, the concentration of C is unchanging, and I'm only going to have the concentration of B that I need to worry about with the two different rates. So I'm going to have 5.06E minus 2. Again, I'm going to have 1. I happen to know it's a 2. It doesn't really matter because it's going to stay a 1. Here's the interesting stuff is B and another 1 raised to the power of Z, which doesn't matter. It's going to remain a 1. So this ends up being 1.58 is equal to 2.5 raised to the Y. You'll notice numerically the number, the 2.5, actually gets smaller. That's an indicator to you that y is going to be less than 1. Remember, I said we can guess and check on these. Certainly, you can use log math to solve this out, but either way, in this particular case, y is going to be equal to 0 0.5, which is certainly possible if you had a complex reaction with multiple steps. That allows me to come up to my top expression here and fill in this new information that this is 0 0.5. And now we're off to the races so that we can find z, our last variable. So this time it's going to be a comparison of trial 4 and still back to trial 1. You'll notice that c is the only thing that is changing in this one. These guys are unchanged and of course I still have different rates. 1.47e minus 1. All that's still going to be just a 1 there. And I have my big final thing. This one effectively ends up being 4.6 is equal to 4.6 raised to the z. And you can see that z must be equal to 1. If you're doing this at home with me, just take note that I am doing some small rounding here and there just to keep things kind of simple. Okay, let's come back up here and I can fill in my last little exponent. Clear more board space. Our work is nearly done. All we have now that's a variable is k. And so now I'm going to tackle this part which is finding that rate constant right there. Given that it's a constant, it does not matter what trial I go and I look to. I can do any of them here, but I need to know the initial rate, so I guess I can't do trial 5. But I pick one trial and I just plug in my numbers. 
3.20 E minus 2. I'm going to put my units on on this one. Molarity per second is going to be equal to the variable I'm trying to find. 0.025. I'm doing trial 1, by the way. Molar to the 2. 0 0.040 molar to the 0 0.5. 0 0.035 molar to the 1. Remember your order of operations. Do those powers first, but take all of this stuff and just divide it over into the denominator over here. And you will find that k, I'm going to write it up here, is equal to, again I'm rounding a little bit, 7,314. And then in order to understand the units, it's going to be molar to the negative 2.5. So remember that's a denominator. And then second to the negative 1. Let me just talk about that for a second. What you're doing, the order is the power. That's the terminology we use. And so this reaction is second order in A, half order in B, and first order in C. If you add all of those together, you get 3.5. So the overall order is 3.5. Notice that these numbers are operating individually on the molarity unit as well. So I have M raised to the 3.5. When that gets sent over here, I have m raised to the 1 in a numerator, but I have m raised to the 3.5 in a denominator from these guys over on the right getting sent over. And that's where, after canceling, I'm going to have a remaining 2.5 in the denominator. And then my second that's already in a denominator over here needs to still hang out in that k so that I can get the appropriate units. Now that we have that, we tackle this very last thing that we were asked to do, which is pretty straightforward. So my rate that I'm trying to find, and now I'm only focused on trial 5 here, is going to be equal to, and then I have my rate constant, 7314. I'm going to leave units out for space. 0 0.020 0 0.050, 0 0.080, 0 .080, and then I have my different exponents. Can't forget those. And if you do this and you crunch all of those numbers, you will find that that particular rate is going to be something like this. And that is the final answer for what I was looking for. So we did quite a few things here with this, again, this thing that's called the method of initial rates. That's what we use to solve this problem. And we have discovered the rate law, which is written up here. And I have my rate constant, which is right there. And there's my unknown rate. So hopefully uh, some of that made sense. And if you think it did, you should certainly let your computer know.